humans. Be silent. You are tuned into the Planetary Union Network with your host, Lieutenant Commander Portis. I got the night shift tonight. I'm driving the ship. Hey, this is Joe Quickle. And I'm Michael May. And this is Planetary Union Network, the official Orville Fan Podcast. Uh, we'll have John Kassar with us later tonight as a special guest co-host to chat about the episode, but joining us right now is Kai Winter. Welcome to the podcast, Kai. Hi, thanks for having me here. I'm the role of Ty Finn on the Orville. But you had a very big role on this last episode, didn't you, Kai? Yes, it was a yeah. very big role. <laughs> It was great to, uh, to see you got to do a lot of stuff and I understand that you, um, so obviously you were, you, was that a real tree that you had to climb? Yeah, that was like a really tall ladder. We had a long time to film that. They had to get a harness on me and everything. Oh, wow. So you felt pretty safe up there. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, did you climb it yourself or did you have help getting up in there? I had help getting up there. Okay. Um, But I understand you drew the drawing that you gave to Isaac in the episode. Is that right? Yes, it is. That's great. Um, Yeah, you're quite an artist. Have you had lessons uh, in art or is that just all on your own? I had a little paint lesson before, but I never had drawing lessons. Okay, cool. And then I understand that uh, you actually played the piano in the episode a, a couple episodes ago, where you, where Kai, or, um, where you played the piano in that one, right? Was that you playing? Yes, that was me playing. I had to learn a song called "Fertilis," and I've had an amazing teacher teaching me. Awesome. So, had you played the piano before? No, my sister used to, but not me. Man, we, that's amazing. <laughs> that was really amazing. That is incredible. Thank you. <laughs> um, so what's a, what's a typical day for you on the Oroville? Like, uh, how early do you have to get up to, uh, to go uh, to be on an episode? I usually have to get there by 7 a.m. And then I check into my trailer. And then after we get checked in, I'd go set up for breakfast. And I'd get breakfast and eat. And then if I had any schoolwork, I would go to school for like three hours. And then I'd go to set for rehearsal. And then I'd film the scene. And then I'd be finished with the scenes. And then I'd go home. Wow. That's a pretty busy day. Yeah. Do you like getting up that early? No. I like (laughs) my sleep. I am with you. (laughs) Um, and you have a lot of great actors who, uh, work with you, um, on the Oroville. Have you, have you learned any lessons from them as far as uh, acting? Um, the John, John Kassar, you, um, he teaches me all the special effects and how we need to do things Mm -hmm. for the special effects. And then Jay Lee, when I was doing my big piano scenes, he would help me with piano. And then whenever Scott Crimes was around, He was a kid actor like me, so he used to teach me how to have fun on set, and he'd teach me on the golf carts, and he'd just ride us around. I think Scott (laughs) still has fun on set. Yeah, Yeah. he would be a great teacher for that, I think. (laughs) (laughs) He is. That sounds super fun. And um, what about Mark Jackson? What's it like working with Mark Jackson? It's really fun because... He would always just like do robot with us, and then he would always play games with us. Nice, <laughs> with you and um, and BJ. Yes. Nice. Um, and what about uh, Penny? Have you learned uh, some pretty cool dance moves from her? Yeah, she taught me some old school dances like the Roger Rabbit and the Running Man. <laughs> but awesome. we also taught her some dances like the Floss, the Orange Justice, and the Shoot. <laughs> great. <laughs> A little cultural exchange there. That's great. <laughs> and uh, so what grade are you starting next year? 
I'm in fifth grade right now, and I'm starting sixth grade next year. And I'm really excited because I get to change classes, and yeah. then I get to join some clubs. Awesome. So are you starting a whole new school then, or um, do you have to? Are no. You... My old school, it's a fifth grade. It's a uh -huh. fifth grade school, too, and it teaches okay. sixth, seventh, and eighth. Oh, nice, nice. So you'll have some of your same friends there and everything. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so tell me about the uh, the process for getting cast uh, as Kai. Like, what uh, did you have to audition, and what was that like? Okay, so first I got the script, and then a couple of days after, I went to this audition, and then I was put on hold a couple days after. And then when I was on audition, my agent called and said I booked the job, and we were super excited. Yeah, I guess so. Um, and is this uh, one of your first big acting jobs, or have you uh, done other things before this? I've done a show called Game Shakers and Days of Our Lives. Wow, cool. Um, and uh, so you play uh, Ty Finn, and um, we were talking to uh, to BJ about the, the character of Marcus, and he was telling us that in in a lot of ways he's very very different from Marcus. And is that true of you and Ty? Are you are you you feel like you're pretty different from Ty? Or are you kind of the same? We're more the same, but. In the last episode, I would definitely not go down that dark tunnel by myself. <laughs> <You're smart man. laughs> so, how are you like him? We love seeing our siblings getting in trouble. We love okay. our moms a lot. And we like to have fun and go on adventures. Fantastic. Um, now, you talked about going down that hole. And, uh, and, and you had to act in this episode with a lot of stuff that was not, not really there on set, right? They kind of added that in later. Uh, what was that like? Was that pretty hard? That wasn't really that hard because they had some of the, like, background in there, but a lot of it was edited with the green screen. Right, right. Okay, but they had enough in there for you to kind of, you kind of could picture, like, what was where, what was where and, and that kind of thing? Yes, because John Kassar would show me where it would all be. Okay, fantastic. Um, he sounds like a really great director, huh? He really is. Good. Um, and uh, so are you, you, know, you, you learned so many new things. You learned how to play the piano. You, you said you took um, like a painting class. It, are you pretty fast at learning new things like that? I'm pretty fast at learning new things. Um. If like I, I'm really committed to it, I can definitely get it done fast. Wow, that's amazing. And um, I guess my last question for you is, uh, any other projects that you're working on um, outside of the Orville right now? So after season two of the Orville, I filmed a McDonald's commercial. It should be airing soon. And awesome. then hopefully there will be a season three of the Orville that will, get us, that will be coming. Yeah, we are definitely keeping our fingers crossed for that. And we definitely want to see more of you and uh, and BJ on the show. You guys are yeah. some of our favorites. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Joe, I think I used up most of our questions. Do you have anything else that you wanted to ask? No, I uh, just uh, appreciate you, Kai, for um, for taking some time out to sit with us and answer some questions. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, it's very much a pleasure. We we really enjoyed talking to you. Okay. All right. Good night. Good night. All right. Well, that was super fun. Oh, <laughs> what man. a nice, what a nice young man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kai's really sharp. Oh man, it's so much. I mean, fifth grade. Come on, like I was not that together. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> when I was ten years old. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, just, you know, learning to play the piano and, you know, and drawing and it's all of it is just, yeah, he's, that kid's going places, man. <laughs> Hopefully straight um, to season three. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. Well, let's, uh, let's dig into uh, this episode, man, because there is a lot of stuff. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, John. Good to meet you. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to, to to come back and play with you guys again. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. We are, 
Yeah, for sure. And we're really excited about doing it for this episode because holy moly, that was uh, that was something. Well, we kept that. I mean, you know, both Seth and I were taking the chance of telling everybody it was a game changer. But I, I think we both were pretty confident in knowing that we were uh, pretty right about saying it's a game changer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, you guys it's are like, it. It's a, double, it's, a, it's a double whammy. I mean, this could obviously have been a finale. Right. You know, twosome. But right. it was built for the middle of the, the season like this. And, and it's virtually the first thing said, said to me. He said, I got a two-part of specifically laid out for you to direct. So, wow. Yeah, this is the kind know, of... He, he, knew, he knew how big this was. This is the kind of episode that would have killed me if it would have been a cliffhanger in a mid-season finale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. So many people online are saying that, which is true because that's what you usually do. Or worse yet, you, you put it at the end of the year and have to wait a whole summer for it. Oh, or yeah. Something. But, <laughs> yeah. But people yeah. are so excited that they don't even have to wait. They only have to wait just one week as opposed to months. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> amen to that. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of uh, like season cliffhangers, like, somebody, or Brandon Brogger retweeted somebody who made a thick kind of a funny comment. They said that sometimes the Orville is funny, sometimes it's serious, and sometimes it's the best of both worlds. Yeah, I saw that. It, I saw that one. I thought that was that was pretty much <laughs> pretty much it. It's, it's how I usually explain it to people when they when you when you try to explain what it is because it's so so unique, you know, in its in what it does. That that's really the reality of it right there is is yeah. in that comment. Yeah, right. Um yeah, and, and you know the episode. It, there is, you know, I guess a superficial similarity to, uh, uh, you know, like to the Borg and uh, you know Next Generation, and, and you know it's the way the story is told and is completely different. And the you know certainly the Kalon um, are very very different from the Borg, but uh, um, but yeah, there is I guess like a superficial except, similarity. Except there, correct me if I'm wrong, but. The board just kind of appeared, didn't they? You didn't set them up for a whole season and a half. No, you know? no, not like that. And then yeah. said, "Hey, by the way, this was always their plan." Right. That, that was pretty brilliant, I think, on on Seth's part. Right. Right. Yeah, and it really puts uh, <laughs> puts our feelings about Isaac in a weird position um, because we've gotten so attached to him, and, and obviously the characters yeah. on the show have gotten so attached to him. And uh, we're not really sure how to feel about it. And, and you know, I totally <laughs> waiting to uh, to reserve judgment and see how the next episode plays out. But uh, like, yeah, I just don't know. I don't know where it's going to go. Like, you know, as well, much as a big a cliffhanger as it is with, you know, they're going to, you know, trying to invade Earth. The bigger cliffhanger to me is this emotional one. Of like, how am I going to feel about Isaac at the end of this thing? Yeah. And it's funny because because. When the reveal happens, it just makes so much sense. Like mm-hmm. everything he was doing, it just it, 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 you just look at it and go, "Yeah, well, God, they, they were telling." He was telling us the whole time what he was doing. He was actually telling you the whole time. You, you just we just weren't looking at it that way, you know. Right. Right. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's kind of just go through the episode here, and uh, so we open on. Um, Isaac and the kids, I believe that's how it started. And yeah. uh, mm-hmm. they're playing a game. And, and what, uh, tell me about that game that they're playing. Like, is, does it have a name? And like, who came well, up with that? Uh, I'm not sure if we even gave it a name. I think it had a name at some point. I don't know what it is now. It wasn't one that I don't think we use it in the show. But I think it was, it was a bit of a throwback to, to sort of the, the Star Trek 3D chess. Right, you know that we all that we all know about, and, and we're always all fascinated uh, with. So it's a little bit of a throwback to that. Uh, and then it was designed by you know our art department, and uh, and then of course the visual effects guys bring it to life. And on the day, of course, there's really nothing there. I mean, the, the guys had the controllers, but mm-hmm. uh, but again, it was a, it was a game where you, you wanted again. It was a, really about the storytelling and the. the storytelling is that you got these two boys and of course the older boy is smart enough to to get one on the on the younger boy and then and then mr show off uh you know <laughs> Isaac Kalon, who is, is so damn good he he wipes them right out and and also a little foreshadowing in a way 
you know, that that there's no mercy for these guys. I mean, you've been playing a game with kids, you're not letting them win. Yeah. Right. You know, they're 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 kind of it's the the AI is just you know mer- merciless actually, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's <laughs> literally like playing against a computer. Yeah, that's m- m- exactly it. So I, I just I, I'm so fascinated by this game. So I, d- when they created it, um, d- like are there rules to it? Like, does, do people know how this actually works, or is it more just kind of a visual thing that uh, that they came up with? Well, we we had, we had a rough idea. It was about it was about lining things up. Like you could see that there were mm-hmm. different planes. You have to line different planes up, and if you line enough of them up, then you, you know, you you kind of run the board, which is what Isaac did at the end. Or you're just, you know, getting points by by lining two of the discs up at the same time. Sure. I and mean, that that that's just a sort of general idea of what it is. We yeah. didn't go any further in, in making the you know the exact complex rules, although. I'm sure some fan out there can, can do that for us. Like, yeah. <laughs> I need an app. I need to be able to over again and figure out the rules. I want to be able to play this on my phone. There'll be an ad by the end of the week. I'm sure somebody. Will. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we could do an app. That'd be great. Actually, that's a great idea. <laughs> um, so yeah, so in that scene, then um, Penny, uh, Doctor Finn comes in, and uh, she and Isaac revealed that they're dating, and the kids are completely not surprised. <laughs> but yeah, uh, which is again very realistic, <laughs> probably in these home situations. Yeah, the well, parents, it is. The parents, the parents, or the or the boyfriend girlfriend think that it's all a secret, and of course, the kids are always way ahead of them. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, as Marcus says, you know, it's a small ship too. Like people are are buzzing about That's this. Right. <laughs> yeah. like we had that. I, scene, I, like... I, I love that line because you, you you know you forget that you forget that uh, in in you know sort of space drama or, or in our case space dramedy, but you forget that the ship is small. And you know you you imagine in high school or even in a workplace, everybody's talking about what everybody else is doing. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it would be no different. It would be absolutely no different if you were on a spaceship. I think right. it would be exactly the same. You know, yeah. so that it, it, it's an interesting line because it just it makes what they're doing feel more real, you know, and, yeah. and more related, more relatable to to people like us that aren't floating around in space. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I picture like one of Marcus's friends saying, "Hey, man, and my mom and dad told me that Isaac and your mom are dating. Is that very true?" And and I can see Marcus yeah, going, exactly. "Yeah, that's, that sounds about right." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he would, yeah, he would, he wouldn't doubt it at all. I think he'd, right. he'd be smart enough to know. Yeah, um, and Kai's whole reaction to it is especially sweet. That like he's just completely on board for it. He wants Isaac to be his new dad, and um, yeah, you know. I mean. That young man is such a wonderful actor. It's unbelievable. Oh my goodness. He is it, incredibly professional. He's not distracted ever, which, you know, partly with children, you just got to keep them focused. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as a director, that becomes your main job. He understands my direction. Uh, there was a lot to do physically in this episode for him. Yeah. You know, running around, trying to stay away from the K-Lon, climbing down, t- climbing down the, you know, the ladder and the tunnels and all of that. And I would just give him the instruction. He would virtually do it perfectly the first time. And if not, with a little adjustment, he'd do it perfectly the second time. So he, he was a pleasure to work with. And, and we put a lot on him. I mean, that, you know, there was a, a lot, uh, a lot asked from him to, to carry off this and the next episode. Actually, he's got a lot of work in the next one also. Yeah. He's amazing. We just talked to him just a few minutes ago, actually. And, um, he blew both of us away. He's so professional and collected. And I mean, I was trying yeah. to remember when I was like at 10 years old and not like that. <laughs> yeah, and, no. uh, but, and he was saying that he, like, I, so he played piano a couple of episodes ago and I guess I had imagined that he was, you know, he had had piano lessons and stuff, but he said, that's not the case. Like he, he kind of just no, learned that song learned for that episode. Amazing. Yeah, we were blown away. Cause, because again, you know, the, the first thing you do, everyone's got to understand is, the script comes out and everyone's excited and the story is great and everyone's great. But then we start breaking down what our huge challenges or mm-hmm. you can call them problems are going <laughs> to be in making the episode, you know, actually producing it because it's one thing to read it and say, it's all wonderful. 
but then you have to break it down. And in and, and that particular one, right away, the first question that comes to my mind is, can he play? Because <laughs> you have to, you know, you, you, you don't want to fake it. You don't want to, you want to see him playing. I mean, that's, that's, mm-hmm. that's the, the part of it. So, boom, you, you attack it instantly. It's like yeah. the first thing that you do when that script comes out. Usually a month before you even shoot it, you're already going, okay, adolescents, let's get them in there right now. So all of that, and this show had a lot of that. This show, when we first looked at it, it was like, okay, we've got one Kalon costume <laughs> for one guy. Okay, so how many Kalons are we going to have? So boom, that has to go into production instantly. Wow, okay? yeah. Now we have 30 guys. I think that's we were 30 plus, I think, at, at our most. Now you've got 30 guys that have to walk and move exactly like Mark has. And Mark has developed it for himself. At no point, mm-hmm. you know, did Mark know about this and develop it for something 30 people could do. So, so we virtually, I, I, I think I put a tweet in there somewhere, but, but we, we had classes. We had, we had, we had Mark give Isaac classes, wow. believe it or not, you know, and, and it was actually, I, I think I told a little bit of it on my phone, but to see all these, you know, I think we were doing it 10 at a time and they're, he's moving and they're, they're, you know, <laughs> copying him basically. And, wow. and he's like, no, no, your arms are too high or you're, you're moving too slow or whatever it was. And so he, he did that. And then we isolated two guys that were really great with, with body movement. We were able to, to, you know, really, really sort of capture what the way Mark moves for Isaac. And then they went off. And they became our our main guys, and and okay. we we had them in we had them in every scene, and they would be the guys that would you know lead the guys or the the ones that would be in the front. The front Kalons would always be mm-hmm. those two guys, and 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 the more we did it, we had a core that were really quite good. Nice. So did you use Mark for any other Kalon, or was he just Isaac the whole time? No, he was Isaac the whole time. Yeah. And uh, and and then of course you know this the thinking of it and. And I mean, even Seth, <laughs> we would do when they were marching in the big hall. He would be shouting out, you know. He'd be, he'd be like a, he'd be like a sergeant major. <laughs> sure that they were like right, left, right, left, right, left, to, nice. to make sure they were in sync. And our biggest challenge of all was when you saw them all on that wall, and they all had to turn exactly oh, at yes. the same time. Yeah, and you know that was a that was a big challenge we did that many 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 times okay i think they probably had to adjust a few in editing to make sure they were completely in sync wow wow <laughs> so i was no, gonna ask again, how many again, times there was, no, there was no there was no room for error and you have to start thinking about all of that when i'm reading the script those are all the things that i start breaking down as a director is like okay how are we gonna do that the guys in the suit you know and and these guys are perfect they're physically holding someone you know, they're 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 metal robots. They're the person wouldn't their their arms wouldn't be moving around. They would be solid holding mm, somebody, mm-hmm, and that's mm-hmm, really mm-hmm. difficult to do when sure. you're really a human in a suit. And so all of those things. How do they fall down? Like you know, when they fall down, they don't fall down like a human. They fall down like you turn the switch off on a machine and everything just goes lit. We we that, again, these are all things that we tested and tested and. And, and, you know, did footage of and made sure that w- when we ended, you know, what it was, it was right. Yeah, you talk about them falling down that, so like, this first scene, you know, Isaac, of course, gets shut down during it. And like, his leg is at an angle that made me uncomfortable to look at. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, well, um, was, again, and so, so what we had for that is two, two stunt guys that, I mean, I swear to God, their, their bodies were, like, made out of jello. <laughs> they were able to just they were able to drop straight down. It was so amazing to see. We actually wow. even had a mechanical we actually built a mechanical version that, you know, had that had like pistons and it was very complicated. Yeah. And uh it actually fell like like you know, like you had all this metal in place and you you let let the joints go and so it really fell like a you know, a, a, a pile of metal of, as opposed to a pile of human flesh, mm. but uh, the stunt guys actually did it better than the than the robot did. Oh, our, wow. our little robot. So, so these <laughs> guys became our our two stunt guys that could virtually 
drop and end up with their leg in a position where you thought, oh, my God, we're taking this guy to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. They were, like, yeah no. it's all, they were like, yeah, no, it's all good. So, so it was really interesting. Again, lots of testing, lots of shooting to make sure it was something we liked, but, of course, something Seth was, was comfortable with. Cool. And I'm going to jump ahead just a second because um, I don't want to forget this, but uh, I want to ask about the decision. To, so, like, Kai actually drew that picture that Ty gives to Isaac, right? I, yes, I think he did. I wasn't aware of that, but I, I, okay. in, in the uh, in the tweet he just put out, it seemed like this. I think the art department helped it a little bit, but I think he did the, the bare bones of it for sure. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I was going to ask if that was, like, a, a decision you made, but apparently not. It was... Uh... Well, I'm always like, I'm the first guy that goes, please don't get professional artists to draw what a, a six-year-old is. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> a nine-year-old. Let's get a nine-year-old to do it. It's like, yeah. it always looks better to me than when a, an adult tries to do what a nine-year-old does. It, it never looks right somehow. It's right, just never, right. you know, you don't think like a kid thinks. It's a little, it's a little different. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, it can't be so abstract that you, you don't know, you're not telling the story. We want to make sure we told that story of this beautiful little family picture. Mm. So I, I think, it, I think it was tied with a little bit of our department help. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, so then, uh, after he goes down, then they, they take him to sick bay and, uh, there's a little bit of a disagreement that Dr. Finn wants to basically treat him as she would a human patient. Um, whereas Lamar wants to take him to uh, engineering and, uh, and work on him there. That was, uh, that was kind of an interesting way of thinking about it. I hadn't really, um, you know, yeah, so I like that too. I thought that, I thought it was an important scene, and and I remember you know talking to the actors, and we kept ratcheting it up a little bit. You know, I think they were uh, because that they they rarely argue like that. It was it mm-hmm. was actually a, a, you know most of what we've done this year, they're pretty much in agreement all the time. But but this was really a sort of a head to head thing, which I thought was nice, and and it also you know Claire's obviously going to be a little more emotional than than she would. Right. Uh, with a regular patient because there, you know, there, there's a relationship there. So that, I thought that was a really nice scene and they both did a great job of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it didn't come across as if they were kind of like arguing over jurisdiction. They, they both had like valid opinions, valid thoughts about like the best way to help Isaac in that situation. And uh, it was right. just kind and, of. And neither were wrong or right. I mean, the, you know, yeah. the, the, the lack of knowledge of, of what, he did, which is also really interesting right away. You realize they, they don't know that much about him. And, mm-hmm. and they don't know that much about Kalon. They don't, they don't know much about his planet. So, so it, in a way, it was a huge oversight that, you know, you, you had this virtual spy on your ship and you didn't really know much about him. Yeah. And I think someone says something about needing a, a Kalon instruction manual, um, which reminds me, we, we talked to Mark a couple of weeks ago and uh i made a joke about wanting like someone to publish a, an island or an isaac technical guide and, and mark said he would not want to read that but i totally would <laughs> so <laughs> if uh <laughs> along with my uh my game app if someone could like make me a uh, a technical manual for isaac that would, that would there totally, you go. yeah you're on your way <laughs> <laughs> um so we get Admiral Halsey back, which is fantastic. I'm a huge Victor Garber fan. Um, yeah, and- yeah so, so are we. But unfortunately, so is the rest of the world. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's really hard to book. Trust we, me, he'd be in every episode. But, we, we, uh, we've tried. He is hard so, to book. <laughs> he's so, yeah, you would know. He's, he's so busy. He's just, and especially because he does a lot of theater. And once, mm-hmm. once he does theater, he's unavailable because... It's you know it's a six day a week job in New York, right? It's not like you can get him. So, so he was. This was his his open open block for us. He comes back a little later in a few other episodes. So cool. you'll, you'll get some more help. He is Fantastic. Victor's incredible. He's incredible. He's got such well, gravitas. And yeah, he does. And it was great. Like it just kind of immediately added some weight to this episode, just because he was like the guy in the pilot. And, uh, right. you know, he's the one who gives Ed his job. And, and so just having him on screen just kind of, I don't know, even like this early in the episode, it just kind of felt heavier <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. I thought it was good. Yeah, no, you're right. That's exactly what Victor gives you. That's why we constantly want him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so then they, they get um, permission to go to Kalon 
because that's the only place they're going to be able to get any help for Isaac. And um, uh, we get some sweet scenes of uh, like Ty kind of at Isaac's bedside and, and uh, he and Marcus um, talking about like whether or not Isaac can hear them. And, and uh, I know that was, that was just kind of sweet. It kind of reminded me of, yeah, I thought that was sweet. Yeah. That was, that was a great scene. And again, only, only the ability of those two boys who are so good to pull that off. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And to make it feel real. Mm hmm. Um, and Claire does the same thing and, and she uh, actually tells Isaac that she loves him. And, uh, um, I guess about that time the, the ship arrives at Kalon and uh, um, they get scanned. How beautiful was that? Oh man, yeah. it just it, the, the visual effects, we talked about this before I think with you too, that the, the, the visual effects department is just nailing it this season. It just, I mean it's, these look like movies. Well, these, these particular two episodes they've been working on I think they started working on them before they started working on any other episodes we did this year because they're so huge. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and if you think this one had a lot of cool visual effects, wait till the next one. I mm. can't even begin to tell you how big the next <laughs> one is. It's massive. <laughs> and so, yeah, it just is. I mean, we all we've been all saying it, and it's true. It's it's really the biggest episode we've done. I think this season, although the last couple, they're they're, they're there's some big stuff in there too, but it's just a beautiful, you know, and we have to really think about the world and the combination of CG and then what we were going to build and what we're going to find on location, you know, and, and what that world would be and how simple it would be and how little they would need as, as AIs, you know, the, I'd like the chair, the chair joke was, mm-hmm, was, mm-hmm. was exactly highlighting the fact that they, they wouldn't really need a chair. You know, and, and how, what would they need? And we thought about charging stations. We never actually built those, but those are something we, we talked about with the art department with Stephen Lion Weaver and his, and his guys and the concept artists. And, and then we ended up at unbelievably CAA. So that big giant building that you're seeing is, is a famous, uh, you know, uh, agency, CAA. Wow. Which, mm-hmm. which amazingly enough has the nickname the Death Star. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. Could, could it be a better place to do this? Right. <laughs> and, and, but but it had what we needed. It had that sort of chrome, marble, shiny glass. We were just looking for that really impersonal sort of you know no warmth at all. <laughs> and mm-hmm. YCAA has this building that has all those things. And, although they do have a tree right in the middle of the thing that we had to we had to sort of CG over. But okay. basically that was it. And, and then, and then it was, you know, then we had to, we had to live in, again, the practical world that when, when you see that big, you know, that big shot of all of them with the two levels of Kalons, mm-hmm. you know, doing the computer wall, well, that, that black, that sort of black band that they're standing on, that's a, that's a built in marble bench into oh, that huh. wall. So we're like, okay, well, we don't want it to be a bench because if people are sitting on it. That defeats the purpose of there being no place to sit and the joke that was already in there. And so I said, we'll put people standing on it and we'll make the wall like this big giant computer wall. And then yeah. we duplicated it. We duplicated it in CG. Basically we doubled oh. it in CG. There was nobody actually standing above them. When we actually shot it, there was only the bottom row. Okay. And then, and then we, du- then we duplicated it in CG. Uh, which again, some amazing stuff that way too. And, and, you know, a little more invisible than, than sort of, sort of a fancy fly in. But, but yeah, so it was all a combination of that. And then Stephen built some beautiful sets, those sets that they were standing in, you know, in that big, that big hall was location. That, that big hall was our only location. The big hall and the exterior where we landed the ship. That's okay. outside of CAA. <laughs> so that was our, our one location. All the other interiors you see, those were all sets. Some of them were extended to make them longer and make mm-hmm. them, you know, there's, we had like three pillars and when you look at it, there's like seven. So we just sort of doubled it. But those were all sets that were built so that were just beautiful. I wow. want to ask you about the lighting on the Orville and some of those because whenever we're in the Orville, it, like the the view screens um, are just bringing in this like beautiful, like bright. I mean, it really looks like natural light. And uh, uh, like I'm sure lighting people are, 
good enough to just be able to duplicate that. But is that what's going on? Like, is that actually fake light? That's well, just yeah, and that was, again, those are all, the, this is when I tell you what we look at it. And, you know, me and my team, the first thing we do is like try to figure all that. You, 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 what you highlight right away are the things that you don't do every week, right? Those are the things that mm-hmm. you point out right away and go, oh, like they're, they're going into sunlight. We have to figure out sunlight. We have to, you know, build a light that can go up and down and create, a shadow as if, you know, you're moving. And, and so, yeah. And, and, you know, Marvin Rush and the, our director of photography and his boys did an incredible job with that. And then we had the, you know, the purple scan light that was, that had to be designed and what that was going to be. So we had the light, the actual scan itself is CG, but we did have the light to emulate from one side to the other like that. So yeah, cool. those are all the things that are different. And, and we love that because it was going to give the Orville a complete different look. To see that sunlight, even even in the mess hall, we had right. beautiful mm-hmm. sun coming in, coming in those back windows, which we, yeah. we hadn't done before. So that was we were all very excited about that. And you always are. And anything that visually can change like that and tell a slightly different story is always exciting from the production crew standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so the Kalon, the ones that we we see have like red eyes and orange eyes, and so and, and we never see another blue eyed. Uh, Kalon in this episode. It, it, can you talk about that a little bit? Or I like I don't want to give anything away if if this is going to be explained no, later we, on. But again, it was it was just a way of distinguishing. You know, I think somebody online put it. And I thought that was a, a great way to say to to sort of compare it, which was you know the different colored uniforms that we have on the Orville, and, and it it did, you know denounced different rank and it denounced different you know departments maybe. And so that that was their way of doing it because they had no sort of you know they had no decoration. Although although some of the armor on on uh, on Prime, I don't know if you noticed, was slightly different. Yeah. Mm. So so yeah, Kalon Prime had slightly different uh, sort of body armor the, the, off the shoulders than than the others did, and that that's really what it was for. And and you know you, your audience has to know who's who, and right. and that was again a really big challenge from my end shooting because if you notice too i shot i, I did a lot of shooting where you saw three kilons together all the time or you saw a, you saw a group of them as opposed to just going to a headshot of a kalon because my problem is going from one headshot to another headshot of a kalon you start getting you know confused as to who's talking and sure. who's who so i did the more, more in groups so you saw them as a group and and to me they 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 had power in being a group you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're, that was their power that they 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 had. A, there's there's multiple of them, so and they all look the same. And so so that was it for us. We we wanted you know Seth really was particular about the the lights in the eyes and that they were all slightly different. And I figured all the blue eyed ones are all the spies on all the ships all over the place. So <laughs> so he was the only blue eyed he was the only blue eyed one there because all the rest were on ships somewhere. Gotcha. <laughs> And so uh, you mentioned Kalon Prime. And so is that like the leader of the planet or just of this particular group that they happen to be interacting with or? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that I, I, I actually don't think we ever thought that, that there was like one leader that was like the top, the mm. top, you know, the, the top banana of Kalon. I don't think we thought about it that way. Okay. I think in a, in an AI world, I think they would, they would really be in, in groups, you know, with one person, kind of dealing with that group and then sure. everyone else knowing what was going to happen without one person having to say this is what's going to happen. Sure. I think that sure. was in, in our minds the way Kalon sort of laid out. Makes sense. Um, yeah, and it's about that time when we get, you get the chair joke, which you know was like a beat or two after I was thinking, man, there's no chairs. Because <laughs> 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 that, is, that is exactly well, what I, I would be looking for I a place to sit you, down. Though, but that's exactly... That's exactly Seth's comedy. He has that ability to to kind of, you know, to, to bring out that little moment of, of we would do the same thing. Like, yeah, that's why yeah. I think people really identify it. Because you'd be yeah. thinking the same thing. Where the hell are the chairs? Yeah. And you keep them up and down. <laughs> you know, it's like we would, it's, that, that's his comedy is always in that world, which I really love. And mm. and it hits you right away when you, when you, when you hear it. And, and you know, it's like, I mean, we'll jump ahead, but, the, one of the uh, best lines, well, not jump ahead, but jump backwards to, to to two episodes ago. Yeah, two episodes ago, 
which is, you know, Scott's line when he says, we are the, you know, the weirdest ship in the fleet. I mean, <laughs> or whatever the line is. But again, because at that point, that's exactly what you're thinking. Uh-huh. <laughs> when it's raining on the bridge, you're thinking, oh my God, this is like the weirdest <laughs> ship in the fleet. Yeah. We are without a doubt the weirdest ship in the fleet. Yeah, <laughs> without a doubt. So, so that's what, that, that comedy hits you right away because it's exactly what you're thinking in that moment. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so we learned that Isaac is, uh, he's done. His, his mission's complete. And, uh, they actually, they talk about disassembling him and reintegrating him. But, but uh, what does that mean? Reintegrating him? Like I'm picturing like, they just, they're gonna like maybe, uh, you know, wipe his memory and like give him a new task. Or, yeah. That's, that's yeah. I think that that was the design of it. And, okay. and basically they just insisting to see him and, you know, convincing them to have him come back and say goodbye, save the save them from that moment of, of it happening right there and there. Mm, you know? mm. Yeah. Not to mention, I mean, they had all his memories obviously cataloged and they could use them anytime yeah. because they use them, they use them against them later to, to tell the potato head story. So they all <laughs> right. use everything that, everything that he saw and, and recorded, they know. Yeah. But yeah, but they could, they could take it out of him just as data and just have it stored you know, exactly. as, as, as yeah. information without the, the the kind of the Isaac personality kind of holding it together. Um, well, and I thought that was interesting too, just from a storytelling point of view. It again reminds you that he's that that quickly changed back into a machine. Yeah, you know, we, we've kind of given him a human quality through the writing and and ourselves. We've projected that on him, mm-hmm. as, as obviously as Doctor Finn has. But that one line reminds you that he's you know he's a He's a couple of keyboard strokes away from being just a a machine that doesn't know who you are. Right. Right. Wow. Um, Yeah. And so the the uh, the kids are told that uh, that Isaac is leaving, and uh, Ty doesn't take it very well. Uh, Clearly, he wants to stay with Isaac. Um, And uh, I forget if this is where he draws the picture. Maybe that's a little bit later. Um, And. we also have Ed and Kelly kind of trying to negotiate with the K line to have them choose to join the union. And, um, that's where the Mr. Potato head thing gets brought up again, uh, where, uh, they, uh, <laughs> they kind of use that against the, the union. They, you know, you guys have kind of played with Isaac, like a toy almost. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and it's great because they're so, you know, they're so proud of the fact that they treated him well. Until mm-hmm. they're reminded of that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people straight away are like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told you about that." Yeah, we're gonna you know, get so, fired. And I, that, think. I, I think that was really, I, I love what uh, what Seth wrote for his own character. There, just talking about humanity and and Earth and 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 sort of the mindset it was all kind of really interesting. Yeah. Um, and we get a we get the goodbye party. Or, or the, uh, the, the off the book discharge protocol, I think they call it. Um, <laughs> more cake. What can I more tell cake. you? It's all about yeah. cake. I, I, you guys like your I cake on set. I remember saying that at Comic Con. I told people, get ready. There's lots of party and lots of cake, and they, they were like, <laughs> "What does that mean?" And I said, "I don't know what I don't know what to say except just watch and you'll see." Yeah, yeah. I mean, cake. We got cupcakes. We got cookie bouquets. Like you guys are on it. <laughs> <laughs> find out that uh the bordis likes corner pieces oh that, that was, was so great I, I, that was such a great scene and again that's one that Seth wanted in like one shot he didn't want to he didn't want to do any cuts for reactions so we did it a few times until the timing was just right and, and in fact i love that we that uh, we ended up using the take where you can see jessica that smile and laugh at the end is so real that's, that's not acting. Nice. <laughs> because Peter yeah. just nailed it, nailed it on that one take, and you can oh, see her smile. Her smile and laugh is just completely genuine. That line about "I hate this party" just had me rolling. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and that was actually. I think. I think that's why we did it. You know, a few times just to get the timing of that. Yeah. Make sure that the you know, and this is where Seth. This is where I'm learning every time I'm out there with him. You know about that kind of about that kind of preciseness in, in timing. You know, it's it's the beat that he gave before he said it, and and mm-hmm. and, and then I think we did it a couple of times because he was turning slightly off where Seth thought it would be funnier to turn. It was like it was that kind of 
we get into that kind of detail with that with that kind of comedy. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, and then Malloy uh, serenades Isaac. And who picked that song? I think Seth did. I think Seth picked that song. Okay, yeah. nice. I mean, he's a song master. I'm, I'm sure he's the one. But I'm, I'm sure there were some conversations with Scott about yeah. you know what what he could sing or what he wanted to sing or or one that would be both kind of heartfelt yet you know funny at the same time. Right. right. And uh, and she's great. He's such a great singer. He is. <laughs> he's so good. Yeah. I'm for trying to remember. Was he part of the karaoke date uh, last season? Um, I, I do. I, I don't can't remember. remember. Yeah, I can't remember. I, I wasn't there the whole season, so I can't. Right, I can't quite remember. But but I wanted to. I wanted to do it as a bit of a reveal. That's why he sort of goes over to the piano. Yeah, he's talking to the guy, and you're not sure what he's going to do. And I wanted that big turn, and there he was with the microphone. <laughs> yeah, you know, melting, out, melting out the first line. I, I, yeah. I didn't want the audience to see him coming. I wanted it to be a bit of a, a surprise. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, they, they they call for a speech from Isaac, and he says, "I don't know these speeches." And oh yeah, you do. You got a bunch of them cataloged, and we get Sally Fields. <laughs> we get Sally Fields, but again, it, it, it's very funny because you just keep forgetting sometimes how old you are, and yeah. uh, that maybe you were you were there and saw it happen. But you know, it's the twenty year olds on set are like, "I don't get it." Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, old people jokes are great. <laughs> Especially with Seth. Seth is such an old soul that he reaches back. Yeah. You know, he reaches back to singing in the rain and he reaches back to, to, to that kind of Billy Joel and 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 Sally Fields famous Oscar speech. Mm-hmm. Um and then this is the point I think where uh, Ty gives Isaac the picture. And uh um like up until this point I'm kind of you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to give Isaac every benefit of the doubt that I possibly can. But man, when he drops that picture in the hallway, it's just like, ah, I think I'm done with you. Isaac. (laughs) Daggers through the heart. That's the design of it right there because we needed you, you know, going into this last part, believing that was true about him. And there's one, one more scene coming where it confirms it, you know, Mm -hmm. and it kind of calls out the dogs on, on the crew. Uh, And then, and then uh, it's, it's a massive moment. I mean, when that picture drops, that's that's a big moment, and and it played, and again we were very careful in the shooting of it and, and the timing of it and when he dropped it, just because we knew that that was that you know again another great scene with uh, that the, there was no dialogue but everything is in in what you're seeing visually. Yeah, yeah, the timing on it is amazing because it does just um, just something about the, the way he does it, and it, you know you see it from far off, and uh, um, yeah, it it really hit me. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it really works. It's amazing. I was surprised. Watching with people that haven't seen it before, there was an audible gasp. Mm, it was definitely mm. like, oh, you know, yeah. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's a fun thing if you people time. that don't know the story because you, you, you get to, you, they give you confirmation on things that you were hoping they would do. Yeah. Yeah. And when that audible gasp comes out, you go, yes, that's exactly what we wanted. Um, and then we have uh, a scene where the uh, the crew of the Orville scanning the surface of, and and picking up these um, kind of circular installations that they think might be particle weapons of some kind. Or, you know, like you know, it's kind of introducing you know the, a little bit more of the mystery of like you know there's something else going on here. Um, yeah, and you start realizing there's there's yeah there's there's another layer coming. You, you start realizing it's not all just about being Isaac and Isaac sort of, you know, going back home and losing him, that mm. something afoot. Yeah, right. Uh, and then we have that tree, the uh, the simulator with tie up in the tree, and, and when we were talking to him, he, he was telling us a little bit about that, like, that he was kind of harnessed up in there, and that there was, uh, but but it, it, it something that you built, right, the, that tree? Well, actually, no, we did not build it. The, 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 the tree is actually on the lot. It's right beside one of the studios we shoot in. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the Fox lot is one of the oldest lots, and they have yeah. these massive, you know, white trunked trees. And uh, the only problem is, of course, that it's right beside a building. Yeah. And in some of the spots, we didn't even take the building out because the building was white. And mm. so in the sunlight, it kind of just bloomed out. Mm. But if you really kind of squint, you can probably see a kind of window in the, in the background in, in uh, some of the shots, but you, you really have to 
there's really no way of knowing that that, that was sure. it. But it was virtually right up against the building. And then we did a wide shot of it and they eliminated the building and that's the shot of it sitting on in that meadow. Yeah. Uh, and then and then when when uh, she comes out, we did uh when she comes out of the simulator door, there was a there's a green there's a nice green area in front of the cafeteria where they usually have tables where people eat. And we <laughs> took over that space and that's where we did her coming out of the door and kind of walking over to the to the tree. But but for safety they were about I don't know, ten feet in the air, twelve feet in the air. Yeah. So we had to build we had to build a platform, so which was just under the shot. So mm. his feet were hanging just inches over the platform and we had to harness him in, you know, for safety. I mean he is a child, so you have to there's many safety things you constantly have to do. So right. when he uh when he climbed down that ladder, he's completely harnessed and wired in. Okay. So so it, so, you know, there's no no way he would get hurt. And so, what's that harness connected to? You? I'm just trying to imagine. Uh, there's that. There's they've got they've got a almost like a little uh, a trestle rig that they hang above him, and that's his harness up into there. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Same. Same in studio. Okay. Uh, for safety. Um. Yeah. But so that was, that... That was, again, another beautiful moment and and a really interesting and again one of those problems that we looked at right away and went okay we were going to find this tree and it was such a short scene we really didn't want to leave the lot to go do it so we you know we the locations guys found some beautiful trees up in you know up north of of la but we we couldn't afford to go there for that one quick scene so sure. we have to find some way of doing it on on the lot hence yeah. we ended up finding a tree on the lot yeah, it worked great it was a good looking tree yeah it was a great looking tree <laughs> i was very surprised <laughs> I was like, oh it was great yeah and uh, it's a good scene too between uh, between Ty and, and Doctor Finn. Like, exactly. and he, yeah. he, he lashes out at her, which is kind of heartbreaking. Because um, like the the first episode that the the Finn kids appeared in, you know, they were um, kind of intentionally you know written as out of control, and you know, it was like part of the right. the episode is Isaac kind of stepping in and helping with that situation, and um, and, and ever since then they've just been super, just like you know pretty well behaved i mean there's this the episode with marcus yeah. getting get in some trouble but um but uh, yeah it was just kind of heartbreaking to see him kind of like lash out at her that way but but she you know took her like a mom <laughs> she like she knew oh, where man. it was coming from and yeah it was again well written and beautifully performed mm -hmm. uh, by penny it, it really felt like that mom conversation and if you have kids you you know that conversation you've had it before yeah you know and it was just it was really well written and it, like i said performed so it felt it felt real, and he was so good, you know, and, and trying to get that lashing out so it felt, again, real, like it didn't it sort of come off uh, false. And it was a great scene, and it set you up for what's to come. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, just the way she talks to him, too, is so good that, you know, the way she tries to explain things to him, and um, she's not talking down to him. She's she's treating him, yeah, you know, like, like and that, being... That, that's yeah. a good mom. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um but uh but he does sneak out and uh he he um decides to leave the ship and uh um we get some great just kind of like Kai having an adventure or Ty having an adventure. Um you know, with the the, the Kalon patrol and uh and he uh you know kind of hides behind this this thing and then they're still coming, so he like gets inside of it and it's uh this kind of subterranean access port and um then he drops the picture and he's climbing down and like that was all like really cool stuff yeah that was all really neat. again we, we built all that it's great we wow. built that cave it was actually the, the when you went into the bigger part of the cave that was the same cave from the uh the, uh everything accepting fishes episode oh okay the cave that the cave they're in yeah so we got double duty on that cave but we have to build the actual tunnel and the, and the stairs going down and have to make it look like it was, you know, really, really deep. So we extended it a little bit with, with CG, but it was, it, you know, there was a platform that was pretty high up again. Like I said, he was, he was sort of uh, safety in just to make sure, because it was a bit of a drop if there was any kind of accident. Uh, but yeah, it was there and hence the skulls at, at uh, Comic-Con. 
Right. <laughs> we can finally right. talk about the skulls. <laughs> finally, finally, what the hell were the skulls doing at Comic Con? <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty wild um, to uh, to just see those piled up and then. Uh, you know, the, you, there's a, the initial pile, but then there's a later uh, shot of just this mountain of skulls. Yeah, and that was bones. again that was, that was something we wanted to do, which was like it went from no reveal when when uh, you know Kai sees it the first time, you don't right. know what he's looking at, and then the partial reveal, and and then again you know, on their face, it was like okay, there's something even more than this. Mm-hmm. And then the big reveal is when everyone gets to see it on the bridge. Yeah. And everyone sees it at the same time. Right. Right. Um, and, uh, kind of added, uh, he's kind of figured out by now that, that the Kalon are stalling about this whole joining the, the union thing. There's something else going on here. Um, yeah. And, uh, uh, let's see the, um, so by, yeah, they so by this point, yeah, so you go. They go back in, and then he he, he kind of confronts the Kalon about all these bodies, and and uh, that's where we kind of find out the history of Kalon. That uh, um, you know, these are the people who originally the, the planet was originally inhabited by some kind of humanoids uh, who built these robots, and then you know, kind of <laughs> did Terminator on them. Yeah, exactly. But I thought I thought it was interesting too because the whole thing about slavery comes up, you know, which mm. is. They, they were slaves and they were treated badly. And of course, you know, as, as us humans say, well, there's no reason for that. You think, well, they come back when, when the Kalons come back and said, well, look at your history. You, 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 you're no one to talk. Which right. I thought was an interesting, you know, a very interesting observation, basically. It is interesting. And, and, you know, we're kind of joking about the Mr. Potato Head thing, but that really kind of, that plays into it in kind of a, a horrifying way that um, they have kind of treated Isaac, you know, like a toy in some ways. Yeah. They have. Um, and, you know, and, and really it's no different than the way they treat each other, but, uh, but you can certainly see the Kalon point of view on it. Yeah. And, and, you know, in their, in their situation, which I only explained briefly, they mm-hmm. were, you know, they were, they were treated badly and, and, kept being treated badly until a point where they say enough. Yeah. You know, which again yeah. mirrors exactly what happens in our world constantly. <laughs> yes. You know, a, group, a group of people treated badly and they eventually fight back or, mm-hmm. or a group of people that think another group of people shouldn't exist anymore and try to wipe them out. So it's something we're familiar with, you know, in our everyday lives. Right. Right. Um, yeah, and there's a line during all that where Isaac tells Ed like, that you no longer command me, which uh, is, is um, again, you know, full, another heartbreaking moment and kind of an episode full of heartbreaking moments. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it, it's, it's been an incredibly emotional episode, actually, for being a, a pretty action-packed one. It, mm-hmm. it really has. I think that's why it, it struck a chord with so many people, because yeah. it, it, it has the combination of both. And, uh, yeah, and we learned that the, the objective was never, uh, as Ed suspected, never about joining the union. It was really about determining if humanity was worth leaving alive or not. And, uh, um, they, they kind of decided that as, so, uh, um, we, we have the kind of, uh, escape sequence with, uh, the Orville is going to try to get back to earth and, um, and, but you have, uh, Kalon invading the ship and um and we have cool guns cool, com- coming out of their heads and oh man <laughs> yeah yeah um and, yeah, and it, landing the ship i mean we didn't talk about that much but landing mm-hmm. the ship on the planet i thought was you know again we we went through a bunch of like okay how are we going to do that and does it have legs that come out but the way it's built because of the way the, the, the back end is there is no real sort of flip bottom to it so mm-hmm. that was difficult, and then we came up with it sort of, you know, in a floating position that that it's being cradled, and so that was really that was really fun going through all that and trying to figure out what, how we were going to do that. But they really wanted it to land on the planet, and you can see it's fantastic to see such a big ship, you know, on the ground like that. So, right. or at least you know, up against the building, it wasn't really on the ground. 
but yeah, and then and then the the attack of the you know we we did a lot of shooting on that. In fact, we did some of the attack. We wanted to beef it up a bit. Seth wanted to beef it up a bit. We shot virtually three weeks ago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we, we did some more. We did some more uh, uh, attacking and and Kalon's falling down and humans falling. So we we yeah, beefed that, it up a bit. We, are, we are a little bit of a shooting day to beef that up a bit. That worked, man. The, the boarding sequence was brutal. Like the, there are people dying left and right. And uh, yeah, and that's, uh, we wanted to do that right away. We want we needed everyone to know that this was going to be serious from here on in. From that point, you know, to the end of that episode, and then moving into the next one, these guys are merciless, and and they will do what they need to do. And so that sequence told that story instantly and mm-hmm. put the stakes up very quickly. Yeah. yeah. When, when the, uh, when the Kalon took the bridge and set in the, uh, you know, occupied the seats, just that was, that was a trippy, trippy moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, it was really kind of cool. And then to see all, our people all standing there and there's nothing they could do. Yeah. And yeah, the guns, went- yeah. The guns coming out of the heads was, was something that wasn't in the original script. In the original script, they had guns. They had okay. weapons in their in their hands, and and it became problematic, quite honestly. So some of the action that needed to happen with them holding guns and holding people, and then what kind of guns that we uh, we had designs of guns that actually came out of their arms, you know, that came out of their forearms. Mm-hmm. Those were some original designs. Uh, at some point, we got to get all these designs out because the art department does such an amazing job designing all of this. Yeah. Uh, and I got to plug my son is the concept artist on on it. So his name is Lex, and he he actually designed the helmets with the with the guns coming out. Oh, very uh, cool. From 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 something Seth wanted to do, and so when when guns became problematic, we were going back and forth, and finally he said, "Their heads. Let them come out of their heads and let them be these, you know." really mean looking mean looking guns and to know that you were looking at Isaac's face you know for a year and a half and and behind that head he had two lasers that could come out at any moment mm. and kill you <laughs> it's just kind of this really scary thing yeah and uh and then, then, then again it was just different we just didn't want them you know with handguns shooting back and we, we just we wanted something completely different and then when when sort of Seth gave us those marching orders to go for the head, the head guns, and we came up with you know design after design, and then eventually that. And the visual effects guys did an amazing job because on set we did nothing; we just had the actual guys with their helmets, and so all of that was completely CG. That's sweet. That's sweet. Yeah, and as you can see, there's lots of it, and so that was that was that was quite quite the task to, you know put all those moving heads and having them open and have the guns coming out with the amount of uh, Kalon that we're doing it was pretty pretty incredible. Uh, we can uh, add the art of the Orville to my wish list of uh, yeah, products so that I need. We talked about a little bit already because the artwork that comes out of the art department is so fantastic. Yeah. That, uh, and, and it'll be really fun because we could actually put the actual shot. You can look at the artwork and then look at the shot and it's mm-hmm. identical, you know, wow. it's exactly what they design. Uh, I, I'm the, the one that really comes to mind. And I've actually, I've got a picture. I'll put it up. Uh, I'll put it up. Uh, I promise I'll put it up on Twitter of, of Bordis, the Bordis relieving himself scene. And <laughs> what we wanted to do. And the concept art. And then I actually held it in one hand and had it, had it in the background actually happening on the set. And so you could <laughs> see how, how much it was exactly the same. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, so I think we're at the end of the story. It's kind of set course for Earth after that, and we get all of the the Orville and and all these uh, these other ships uh, taking off, and and uh, then it's to be continued. Yeah, that's a surprise moment when you see those. And again, we were very specific as to our ship leaving, and then suddenly you're kind of seeing one, and then two, and mm-hmm. then three. We, you know, every shot you built more and more until you. You've, you've got so many, you're just going, oh my God, this is, this is going to be crazy. And the ship design was fantastic. Yeah, you know? it's really cool. And that Brandon, Brandon, our visual effects, uh, uh, he's one of our visual effects masters is what he is. And he designed those ships and they're just incredible. 
that were just so cool and so different. Yeah, and there's a nice payoff to that earlier moment where they see these kind of circular installations and they're thinking they're guns or something. And then, you know, they, I don't think anybody spells it out, but, uh, you know, you, you pick up very quickly that, oh, these these ships are what they were noticing on the planet before. Yeah, and and there's a lot of them. Yeah. Well, now yeah. Let's, talk about, let's talk about everything that happens in the next episode for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll take the scoop if you want to give it to us. But uh, we're also yeah, you'd, you'd willing to. So you'd be the most popular show right now. <laughs> yeah. Dying to know where we go from here. Unfortunately, yeah. we couldn't post it, but we. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. We're very excited to see it, though. Yeah, yeah. We'll. It's, we'll... Uh, it, it, it's a good payoff. It's a good setup and a good payoff. You know, there's there's some there's some great moments in it. There's, there, it really is a nice two hour story, basically. Cool. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks again, John, for joining us for this. It's it's so fun. You know, kind of talking about the episode with you here. Yeah, it is fun actually, and, and uh, I love that you guys love it as much as you do. That's important for us cool. to have have you guys spread the word like you do. We really uh, appreciate it. All right, so we'll talk to you next week for part two. Sure. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm really, I'm really, it's going to be really exciting to see what people think, actually. Cool. Cool. All right, boys. All, All right. Thank you, easy. sir. Thanks. All right. See you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Awesome. So that's that's it. That's all we got. <laughs> that's all we need. That was fantastic. <laughs> And um, yeah, so we'll be back next week for part two of identity. And as you heard, it sounds like John's going to join us again. And so uh, if you're not already, follow us on Twitter at planetary underscore union on Facebook. We're at planetary union network, Instagram, also planetary union network or our website at planetary union dot net. <laughs> That's really nice. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. Thank you.